What is going on YouTube? In today's episode of Rad Dad Life, I'm gonna teach you how to bench press. If you didn't get it from my subtle cues. All right, bench press video coming up. Welcome back. So, bench pressing. You know, it's every bro's favorite day. Monday's chest day, uh, Tuesday's chest day, Wednesday's leg chest day, uh, Thursday's chest day, Friday, and the rest days. So, most bros do chest. Do they do it correctly? I hope so, since they do it every day. But for those who are getting started, or for those who want to correct their chest, this video is just for you. I've done two powerlifting meets. I think they were like two years apart. Uh, my first meet I did, you can watch the videos, I have them. Uh, the first meet I did, I competed at the 148. My bench press max was like 365. I failed my last two attempts, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, second powerlifting meet, I did 289. And these obviously, if you don't know powerlifting, you have to listen to all the commands. They say unrack, you hold it. They say lift, you drop it. What is it? Maybe they say lift. You sit here until they say lift up and then you raise. So there's not like a little bounce and go. It has to be completely paused. You have to listen for the commands, get it up and then hold for the command to wrap. Get it! There you go. So it's a little bit harder, so yeah, because my all time PR of power or bench press is 305. And that was, I was roughly sitting at 155. That was my right, that's my weight that I roughly sit at and then I would compete at 148. Right now I sit roughly around 155, 150. I range in that area. I don't have nearly the same muscle mass, but I still have and I still retain those good techniques that help me lift the weights that are close to what they used to be. I am gonna be working on them to try to get better and stronger and maybe even do another competition next year i don't know if i'll be able to get on time uh if you want to ask questions you can watch the video this drops the week before video i'll link it somewhere maybe in the description i dislocated this guy this guy decided he wanted to disobey the rest of the fingers and be a rebel and go that way while all the other fingers went straight so i'm babying it for right now when i lift weights and stuff so bench press very identical to every other big movement, chest, deadlift, or sorry, bench, deadlift, squatting. It's all the same. It all has to do with one word, consistency. Consistency is key to getting more weight up and building a stronger, in this case, chest. Meaning your hand placement has to be the same. Your body position has to be the same. Your leg placement has to be the same. Just like I say later in the video, you don't want happy feet. You don't want them jittery feet. That's going to hurt you and you're not going to get any weight up because of that. So we want a nice solid foundation. We want to make sure that our position is exactly the same and we want to lift in that same movement, have that same bar path. We're building that mind muscle connection, that neuromuscular connection. And just like in that squatting video, the more you do that consistent, that same movement over and over and over again, the more you start to build that, that mind muscle connection to strengthen so that no longer when you start to do weight, you start to have the shakes. It's more of a, just trying to get the weight up. So if your goal is to build more muscle mass, obviously the best placement is about shoulder width, a little bit in, a little bit out. Typically, wherever your shoulders are, that's gonna be the best spot for you because that's where you're gonna be utilizing your triceps and your chest, the two main muscle groups in the, in the bench press movement. If you go out a little further, you'll be more chest dominant. If you go in a little closer, you're gonna be more tricep dominant, not working them as equally as you would if you're more right around shoulder width apart. And there is purposes to each one or the other. Obviously for a little bit wider, great for powerlifting, the bar travel has, the bar path or the bar travels a lot less, which in powerlifting, all it is is about getting the weight up. It doesn't matter how far the bar travels. It only matters that you get it up and down in, you know, three white lights. And for a tricep dominant, if you have big triceps, not that much of a chest, I used to be very tricep dominated because I used to love doing dips. You know, I would do dips with like, 150 pound dumbbells. Oh, the kettlebell dips. 
All the gains. You took them all. Yes. I loved it. And because of that, my triceps did grow. And because of that, my bench press is actually stronger, close grip. But then I realized for a more proportional chest to tricep ratio, you know, shoulder width is the best uh, width for me. And then, uh, unless you're in prison, I don't recommend doing suicide grip. That's when you grip the bar like that. Yeah, most times you'll probably be fine. I wouldn't risk it. I don't want a precardio thumb to the chest with 315 pounds on the bar. <laughs> not good, not fun. <laughs> I promise you, you're not gonna have a good day. So wrap your fingers around that bar, be safe, don't be crazy. And uh, we're gonna cut to the video right now of me doing lifts from different angles. So you see that my bar placement is the same, my hand placement is the same, my legs and body positioning are all the same. Here we go. So just like in the squat video, consistency is key. That is the key to getting more mass or more weight up is consistency. Same hand placement, hand positioning, foot placement, body positioning, and same bar path every single time. That will consistently help you put up more weight and build more mass. Whatever your goal is, it's still the same outcome. It needs to all be consistent. And so for me, I've bench pressed a couple different ways. I've been very narrow before, or I've actually been very tricep dominated, which is right about here. I've also been a little bit wider out. My fingers are on the grooves, my pinkies. But I found that if you really want to build mass, build a strong big chest, honestly going just roughly around shoulder width height, you know, a little in, a little out. And this general area seems to be the biggest and most consistent way, or the best and most consistent way to actually lift more weight and build more mass. Now, if we're talking power lifting, it's gonna vary depending on your leverage ratios and your arm length and how, you know, how broad your shoulders are. But typically in power lifting, the most minimal movement uh, the less bar has the less the bar has to travel the better so in their case you'll see them go out kind of wide arch their back crazy so typically it literally just be like this so very minimal movement that's entirely different that is for powerlifting if that's what you want to go then try arching your back pretty crazy amounts and going a little bit further out because that's going to make the bar travel a lot less and that's the goal is the goal is to put up more weight more numbers and obviously doing so with uh, less bar movement or bar travel is easier. But for you guys that want to build strength, that want to build, you know, bigger chest, it's going to be roughly around shoulder width, you know, in a little bit out. So just like before, make sure that you have consistent hand placement. So for me, it's right at the crease of my thumb is where I like it to be. I kind of picture like, oh, I'm doing a thumb print. That's exactly where my hands would be. Once I get my hand placement, I lock my grip in. I make sure my eyes are eye level with the bar because that's where I like to be. I bring my shoulder blades back, squeeze my rhomboids, then I bring my legs back. And now I'm in a nice tight position. I come up and then it's gonna see the same bar placement every single time. No movement, no shifting, every time. Aim for the same spot of your chest every time. Make sure the bar goes straight up and down as best as you possibly can. And back. What I don't want to see is I don't want to see happy feet. I don't want to see dancing feet. If you're struggling, dancing your feet around is not going to help you get that weight up. It's actually going to lead to you possibly getting yourself hurt because your legs are your tree trunks. They're your foundation. So when you have them nice and planted, you squeeze those glutes, squeeze those hamstrings and push as much as you can. You have that unified muscle group working to get that weight up. If you're dancing, you're taking away your biggest muscle, your biggest factor, which is your legs. And now you're putting a lot of strain on your core, your lower back, your stabilizers, because now instead of having a nice solid foundation, it's like me taking an ax to the tree trunk, hitting it from different areas, and then saying, okay, let's see if you're as strong as if you were in it, and if you were uncut. It's not. It's gonna be able to be knocked over a lot easier than if you have a solid tree branch. Same thing with bench press. Sorry, a lot of cars. If you have your feet, if you have your feet nice and planted, you're gonna be one solid movement. So when you're pushing through, flex those glutes, flex those quads, and push through. No shifting of your weight, because that can cause damage to your lower back. If you're trying to get it up and you're shifting your body weight, you're gonna put strain. If that's the case and that's where you are when you're lift, if you have a spotter, of course, drop the weight. And if you don't, don't have collars on your weight. If you're lifting by yourself, 
When I bench press, I never put plate or I never put collars on my plate. Even if I have my safety straps, you know, worst case scenario, they're not set right. You didn't test them, and then the bar falls on your chest. You can shift a little bit of your body weight over enough for that plate to slide off, and then the other side will slide off with it, saving your life. A different angle, just so you see that I how I'm talking about when I mean my feet are nice and planted. So just like before. I'm going to preach it till you die. Consistency is key. So like I said before, put my fingers on the same spot. And once I do that, I roll my, my back nice and tight. I squeeze my rhomboids together. My shoulder blades, I pitch them tight. I bring my legs close to me as much as I can without lifting them up. I look at the bar, make sure my bar is nice and placed where I like it. And then up. Aim for the same spot on your chest every time. You'll see some lifters or some power lifters actually bring their legs all the way back. If that's how you have to do it, that's perfectly acceptable. It's the same concept. Their legs are brought back as far as they can on their tippy toes and their legs are nice and flexed. Their back is nice and arched. And now they're a nice, tight, solid group of muscle. What I was saying for powerlifters is they over exaggerate this because the rules are you have to have your butt and your shoulder blades touching the pad. So they do it at a crazy amount and then go super wide and then bring the bar to this part of their chest. So the movement is literally here and then they say up. So your bar path is very minimal compared to how I do it this way. Hands are a lot more narrow, you have a lot more bar path to travel. Great for powerlifting if you want to just get numbers up. For building your chest, not as good. You're not going to get a nice full chest that way. You're not going to build strength as easily. Back in the day, I was able to hit this for 10 reps. I'm nowhere near that anymore. So I'm just literally probably going to do this just for one. Uh, don't like to make excuses for my chest. is a little sore and sore with my hand. But just to show you, I'm a little bit heavier of a rep for me. I'm going to still keep the same foundation of everything we just talked about. Same consistencies. I'll tighten it out just a little bit, nothing crazy. And the plate is the same. Bring those shoulders back. Squeeze those glutes and those legs. In summary, bench press fundamentals has a lot to do with every other squat and deadlift fundamental, which is consistency. The same hand placement, foot placement, body positioning, same bar travel, or the same bar path every single time. It is the key factor in every big movement you do for you to keep yourself safe and to push more weight up and to grow bigger muscles. So consistency is key. Don't forget that. If you guys have any questions about how to lift more weight, there's a million different things we can do like pause depth or pause bench press, reverse band, progressive overload. I can make a bunch of different As always, videos. thank you so much for liking my videos, commenting, subscribing. I really do appreciate you guys. As always, have a red day. Flex out. Maybe I should do the chest out. Chest out.